those birds that we saw the other day, Paul, we were out for coffee, weren't we? It was a lovely sunny day and we decided to, to, to go out with our day off and it was, those little birds were really colourful, I mean really colourful, but lovely yellow and green i mean what and like an orangey color what what were they they were love birds that you always get two of them well quite often oh that's yeah. why the two yeah. were always yeah. together wasn't yeah it? right yeah they call them love birds yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well yeah. good morning to you yeah birds and today we're looking at birds we've got three weeks on different kinds of birds in the scriptures so today's bird is a raven and we're going to see some lessons that we can learn that the Lord wants us to grasp from these birds. In fact, now here's the thing. Jesus said, consider the ravens. So if Jesus wants us to consider the ravens, we ought to do so. Good point. Um, so they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. Luke twelve twenty four. So, now just prior to this scripture, to this verse, yeah, the, we get the parable of the rich fool. Now that doesn't sound good straight away, does it? The rich <laughs> fool, and. It, he, he, we see that he, though he was rich, he was a fool because it's God who supplies all our needs. Of course. We don't rely on our riches or money or anything like that. It must be God. So we see the rich fool parable right next to this verse about the ravens. Ah. Uh -huh. Therefore, it's connected. Yes, it's connected. And Jesus here is using the ravens to warn us against anxiety, for one thing. Do not do not worry. Consider the ravens. Yeah. So, God provides. Yes, he provides. God provides. And that's a script, uh, lesson we learn in Scripture. It is from Psalm 147, verse 9. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. A lovely verse there. Lovely verse, yes. So um, we see then that, um, the, 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 you know this verse in Psalm 147 verse 9. Okay. If you go back one verse, um, it, it says he covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes the grass grow on the hills. And then we go into that verse ah. about the beast and the ravens. Okay. And the thing is that we tread grass underfoot as though it were nothing, but God causes it to grow to feed his creatures. Right, yeah, to feed his creatures. So we see the greatness of God here uh, occupied with the smaller things which we walk on, yeah. we walk over, we lie the grass and so on, which feeds the cattle. So the, now, so we see the, the vastness of the universe, and yet God considered with the small things that we almost ignore. Mm. So uh, this reveals God's greatness to us even more. And men may sometimes treat their cattle with cruelty, but the Lord feeds them. And there's a lesson here for us. Amen, yes. Uh, notice here in this verse, it says, And to the young ravens which cry. Right. So these wild creatures, which seem to be of no use to man, <laughs> they hang around the car parks and yeah. the service stations looking for some food from the windows and that. Well, we, we, people may consider them worthless, yet they take their place in the ecology of nature, you know, the overall picture yeah. of what God is doing in, in the world. Yeah, and I was talking to Dad Poulton only a few days ago, and we were talking about like little midges, 
you know, that fly around. Oh, oh yes. And Dad says, well, God made everything for a reason. Ah. Everything. Yes. And I was thinking about that, you know, and I thought, well, yeah, that's true. God has his purposes. I don't know why we have midges, but <laughs> God has his reasons. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a couple of times the last couple of days. You have, actually. But there is a reason, yeah. Yeah, and... When they are mere babies, these ravens, they can only chirp yeah. to their parents um, for food. The Lord does not suffer them to starve, but he does supply their needs. They open wide their little mouth yeah. and he fills them. <laughs> Praise God. Now that is a scripture. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. I love that picture Um, psalm 81 verse 10 so this actually is the lord providing for the people after they have come out of egypt um in fact the full verse says i am the lord your god who brought you up out of egypt open wide your mouth and i will fill it and you know the, the lord Gave them plenty of food. Then oh, was yes. the, why are we going into the Sinai wilderness? There's no food there. The Lord certainly provided for them. Yes, he did. And notice how we have to open our mouth wide. Uh, and that yeah. means not in a half-hearted manner, but we should expect great things from God. Praise God. And we will get things from Great from things, the Lord. yeah. Yeah. I know. It's it's. There's a lesson there, isn't there? I think yeah, so. Yeah, open wide your mouth in full of expectancy. So, God had brought the people out of Egypt and he had shown them that he could do great things for them by pulling them out of Egypt. He had proved his power and his goodwill. It remained only for his people to believe in him and ask large great things of him if their expectations were enlarged by opening their faith wide to the widest degree then it would be filled yes they would be filled and remember that however wide we open our mouth we cannot exceed the bounty of the lord oh that's a good lesson isn't it Mm. yeah because his storehouses are vast beyond comprehension. Yeah, I mean, the raven is is not particularly an attractive bird. I thought it looked nice and shiny, those birds, but they're not particularly attractive. Yeah. And yet it is known as a clever bird. All right, okay. Yeah, they're known as clever birds. And they're also known as not the cleanest birds, but... I don't think we'll go into that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Thanks. God, I haven't had my breakfast yet. No, you haven't. <laughs> but God's word does tell us this. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Romans 3, verse 23. And sometimes we are ourselves unclean, yet Jesus paid our penalty on the cross so that we could be cleansed and forgiven. So... Before we look at Elijah and the ravens, because that's a famous story, isn't it? Elijah and the ravens. Ooh, do you think that'd be a good name for a band, actually? It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, Elijah and the ravens, yeah. <laughs> that would be a good name for a band, yeah. So if we think about the background first. Okay. Because Elijah was fed by the ravens. He was. Um, but l- let's find out how we got to that situation first. Because God told Elijah to flee to a brook called Kerith. In the scriptures, there's a stream that had flowing water. Right, so Ahab had reigned as king over Israel for that, at that time. that time for many years. And his father previously had reigned, that was Omri. And Omri had done much evil in the sight of the Lord. He'd done more than his uh, predecessors. But Ahab was even worse. Yeah. And Ahab got married to Jezebel. And we can read about this in 1 Kings 16 verse 25. 
So getting married to Jezebel, that doesn't sound good straight away. It tells you to be careful who you marry, doesn't it? Yeah, be, be careful who your friends are. Yeah. Well, okay. Ahab, he was led into bad ways and he did many evil things, more than any of the other kings before him. And as I said, we read in 1 Kings 16 now, going on a bit, verses 32 and verses 3, that Ahab, he worshipped Baal. And this was provoking the Lord in 1 Kings 16, 33. He put Baal on a par with the Lord. He did, didn't he? And it says, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. These were bad days for Israel, but the Lord raised up the right person for the right time, for the right job. Elijah. Correct. Yeah, okay. So that's the background. And now we come to what happened next. God gives Elijah a command that he is to tell King Ahab that there would not be any dew or rain in the land for a few years now there's a reason for that because you know Jezebel well she had been feeding 450 prophets of Baal Ooh. and 400 prophets of Asherah and they all ate at her table right. in other words she provided food for all these Prophets, But the Lord wasn't pleased. No, no, and we see a picture here. If you're going to feed the false prophets in the land yeah. of Israel, then the Lord is going to stop that supply of food. And he did that by stopping the rain from coming for all that time, three and a half years. Now, James in the New Testament, chapter 5, Verse 17 makes it clear. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. And another translation is Elijah was a human being even as we are. I love that. I just love that. He uh, prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops, says James in the book of James 5, verses 17 and 18. So Elijah told King Ahab this news. God then tells Elijah to hide by the brook Kerith near the Jordan. Yes, and now Elijah knew that God would look after him during this time of drought, which would naturally cause a famine. And Elijah drinks, drinks from the brook and God sends ravens to feed him with meat and bread and we read that in 1 Kings 17 verse 4 so we now we we may think that being fed by a raven you know given meat that's been carried by an unclean bird like a raven isn't going to be good for you um won't there be a problem with bacteria and things like i know i would think that yeah i, I know what you mean i really do but if god had provided that food okay which then, he did which he did god did provide that food then it is safe don't ask questions don't ask questions yes yeah. there for your good because god has your best interest at heart he has our best interest at heart yeah isn't he? which he immediately reminds us of corinthians because yeah. paul says eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions questions of conscience for the earth is the lord's and everything in it if an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go eat whatever is put before you and without raising questions of conscience 1 corinthians 10 yeah well god had then sent elijah there and the ravens they could have fed him anywhere 
but God the Lord wanted him there at Kerith and provided for him so here we see the significance of the ravens yeah so God gave him food and drink and Jesus said consider the ravens God feeds them and now God was using the ravens to feed Elijah. <laughs> right, so the other way around. Yeah, yeah the yeah. other way around. So God feeds the ravens, the ravens fed, fed Elijah. Elijah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm beginning to see a principle here. We ought not to despise anyone because they, all people, can feed us in some way. Like Paul said to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Yeah. But set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Yes. And the King James Version says, Let no man despise thy youth. And also in Isaiah it tells us that a little child would will lead them in Isaiah 11 right, verse 6. Right, so we ought not to despise anyone, no. even if they're young. That's right. And Jesus said, at that time, um, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The, the disciples used to like asking that question, yeah, they didn't did. they? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change... And become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes such a child in my name welcomes me. Matthew 18, 1 to 5. Yes, lovely. And there's some good lessons, isn't there? So Elijah's response was quite something as he never questioned God did you notice that he never questioned God even though he must have felt it was like well that's a strange command from God I think I would <laughs> and even though it must have felt strange God prepared resources for him during the time of drought by using the ravens he never asked God to send the rain for his own means because this would have affected him yet God gave him substance via those the ravens okay and later through the widow woman he trusted God in his provision and so we can learn a lesson from Elijah and the ravens so going back to thinking about the raven's food because yeah. it's, it's on my mind yeah <laughs> Yeah, because I'm a bit finicky like that. You I, know, I can I, understand I, that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good eating food that's, uh, you know, or if there's a picture of something, it puts me off of my food. Yeah. They say if you want to lose weight, <laughs> go and sit uh, at the um, the table in the hospital where the surgeons go and when they're discussing their operations, because that will put you off. <laughs> you just won't want to eat. <laughs> So, it came from a raven's beak, didn't it, that food? Yes. And, so, and remember that the ravens are, are an unclean animal. They are omnivorous. That means they'll feed on anything from small mammals to nesting birds' eggs, um, berries. They will eat carrion. And you know what carrion is, don't you? That's the decaying flesh of dead animals. Ravens will also scavenge from other predators and even from human landfills. You see them, don't you, at the, at the landfill sites. But the thing is, Paul, if Elijah hadn't eaten from the ravens, then starvation would have set in. Yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah so I think you really have to trust God in that. You, you trust God, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and also, d doesn't this remind you a little bit like the Pharisees? They washed everything. They did, actually. You know, they did. And, and it, it, the Pharisees, um, they got over the top yeah. with it, you know. And it, we know about bacteria these days. But don't they say, you know, you know we, if you make food too refined, yeah. you lose some of your immunity. 
Yes, yes. You know, yeah. if you if you never mix with people, that's you, right. You lose some immunity, that's and right. that's happened before, yeah, hasn't it? It's it's I true. I think you know, you know um, King Henry the Eighth's son Edward. Yeah. Was kept away from people. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah, and he was a lovely lad. Apparently, he was interested in the scriptures, but they kept him away from the people. And then on his first tour of the country, he picked up a bug. And he'd got no immunity. No, no resistance, it. no immunity. So, so God has a way of working, and he doesn't he? he passed away, didn't he, young? He died, young, yeah. he died young, yes. So interestingly, C.H. Spurgeon likens the food bought by the ravens to spiritual food. He likens it that God may bring a word to us through an unclean vessel mm. even. So spiritually unclean, like like a raven. Yeah. God can use all sorts of means to speak to us. And also, that one can bring spiritual food to others, and yet, weirdly, still be unclean spiritually themselves. God uses even the wicked, the, the scripture says. Mm. So, uh, C. H. Spurgeon c- continued, he says... Um, But see, too, how possible it is for us to carry bread and meat to God's servants, and and we do, and some good things for his church, and yet be ravens still. Yes. So uh, there's a few lessons there. I remember my my mum, when I was a young boy, she heard this famous singer on TV singing it, and it was a spiritual song, but the man who was singing it wasn't known as a Christian. <laughs> Let's put it like that, right. okay. But he was singing this song. And my mum was just laying the table, and all of a sudden she started almost weeping because mm-hmm. of the song. And she said, I don't know if that man knows the Lord, but the words of that song are powerful, and the Holy Spirit's working through them. Wow. So that's a little bit like, yes. you know, the ravens. That God can even use ravens. Let's not forget that. No. Even people who oppose the Lord in some way will have to, they bow the knee to the Lord and they don't even realise they're doing it, some of them. It's true. Well, the brook where Elijah was, it then started to dry up, but God had a plan because he sent Elijah to a woman from Zarephath. Is that how you pronounce it? It is. Well done. (laughs) Zarephath. And he had one son. She had one son. And because of this drought, they only had enough, like, flour, food to last for one meal. But God, in his faithfulness, cared and provided food. Yes, God spoke to Elijah again. Because the brook Kerith now is beginning to dry up because of the drought. Um, but God and God told him to go to the widow where he, where he was fed. Yeah. yeah. So God spoke yet again to Elijah and told him to go and meet King Ahab and tell him that God would send rain. So King Ahab blamed Elijah for this drought. And Elijah tells him that it was due to Ahab's sinful ways that God had it caused this drought mm. and God's punishment upon him. You can read that in 1 Kings 18. And Elijah, he wants to prove to the people that Baal is a false prophet. Yeah. And we know that God is bigger and the prophets of Baal were defeated because Elijah slew them. He slew them all, and the people acknowledged the Lord, and we know then that the rain fell, and we read this in 1 Kings 18, 41. Now, Elijah is an amazing example, and he trusted God, and we see his trust. He was obedient to God, and the Lord used ravens to provide meat and bread for Elijah. Now, this was a divine intervention by God, and normally ravens only care for their own but we see this was god ordained god knew exactly what elijah needed and i love that that god knew the fact that he knew exactly exactly what elijah needed 
And yeah, as you said, ravens only care for their own. That's right. Yeah, but this shows us the ability of God to change someone's selfish heart. <laughs> because if ravens, they're normally selfish birds. But if God can change the raven to give food away, he can change our hearts too. And we can learn it's not in the taking, but in the giving that we are blessed. Yes. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And the ravens, they came twice daily. They didn't just come once a week and give stale bread. No. <laughs> stale no. bread. They had enough to be nourished. Yeah. You know, and we, we read in the Lord's Prayer, give us our daily bread. We see God's yeah. provision, don't we? They came twice a day. Twice a day. I yeah. mean, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And Elijah had enough food to to, to sustain him albeit not perhaps in the nicest of ways, shall we say, but he was grateful to the Lord for provision. Yeah, we don't. Th we think of it as not the nicest of ways because we're full, you know, in the 21st century, we like everything clean, yes, don't we? Yes, that's right. You we know, do, but we probably do. in Elijah, it didn't bother Elijah at all, probably. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's true. So God commanded the ravens to feed Elijah. And God had sent Elijah to hide at the brook Kerith. And Ahab was probably thinking, well, I, I, Elijah must be dead because there's been no food. Yeah. But God had a way of, God, of keeping Elijah safe. And that's important for us all, isn't it? We don't know what days lie ahead of us, brothers and sisters, but God is able to look after us. And this lesson here from Elijah teaches us that God did not forget Elijah the ravens were heaven sent they really were and they they we say the birds fly in the heavens don't we and they, these really did they were commanded by God so the game the same God who sent the ravens now sends Elijah to live with the widow of Zarephath Right. As the narrative of Elijah's life unfolds. Yes. And sometimes we ourselves are called to hide by the brook. And if we are willing to obey God, God will take care of every detail. Amen. I mean, he can send the ravens to feed us when the world has forgotten us. And like Elijah, God provided in for him in an expected way i love that god provided in an unexpected way for him mm. and for elijah he sent the ravens and then this widow woman and it says in luke 12 24 consider the ravens they do not sow or reap they have no storeroom or barn yet god feeds them and may we expect the unexpected because the Lord can send what we need to us, Praise just like God. he did Elijah. Okay, right then, so. The raven's wings went from fat as down to the river they flew. They carried meat, they carried bread, as God had told them to. song there of truth how God provided for Elijah yeah praise God shall we so pray? let's pray okay. yeah dear Heavenly Father we thank you that you provide for your children yes. and we do pray Lord give us this day our daily bread and we think physically of daily bread but also the bread of heaven yes. Lord Feed us this day on the bread that comes from heaven. The ravens were sent 
from heaven above. It was a command from heaven that the ravens would feed Elijah. And we pray, Lord, that you will feed us. And we pray that we won't despise any way that you feed us, Lord. Lord, that we may not turn up our nose, Lord, at anything that comes our way. Help us to recognize that you can use all things, Lord. All things serve you. And we give you praise for the way that you work in our lives. Lord, we do pray you'll be with those who are in special need at the moment. Yes. Be with our brother Tim and be with Tim's mom as well, Lord, Mrs. O'Connor. Pray that, Lord, your hand of healing will be upon them both. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And, Lord, for all others who have that need of a touch from God, mm. and, Lord, we confess we need your touch, Lord. We need you to touch us, O oh God. And we thank you that you are there, ready and willing. We give you praise, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on Living Stones Church on the Internet. It's been a joy, as always, to be with you. And tonight we have Zoom at 5 p.m. with Dave Horton, Horton, who is going to be speaking on forgiveness. So please join us, Dave we'll have something really good to bring to the table, so to speak. Yeah, that's five o'clock today, British Summer Time, Zoom. So please join us. We have a lovely time of fellowship together. And it's a chance we can, the Lord can speak through the Living Stones members, brothers and sisters, each one. And we've had some really lovely times where the Lord's presence has been with us. So please join us on Zoom. We'd love you to be with us today. And tomorrow we have on Monday at 9am, quote, and Paul's got a very interesting quote to bring to us tomorrow. It did make me smile, Paul, okay. that your quote. So I'll say no more about that, but uh, okay. it's a good one. Yeah. And on Wednesday, Jeannie is going to carry on her Bible study with Haggai chapter 2. Wasn't chapter 1 really interesting? It's surprising how much depth you can get out of these yeah. minor prophet books. Yeah. yeah, I've enjoyed going through the book of Haggai. Yeah, very interesting Praise God. Uh, book. You know, only two chapters, but um, I did say actually it was the shortest book in the Bible. It's not quite and the I shortest. I do apologise because it's not quite the shortest book. Yeah. It's one of them. But I think it's... Is it oh, Obadiah is the shortest book in the Bible, just to get that yeah. right. And then... Because people have written in with complaints. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't, really. <laughs> no. Thank you. And also, on Friday, we have... Who do we have on Friday? Um, it's a spade. Oh, it's Magnificent oh, memories. My memories, isn't it? Oh, okay. I think that's with Raymond, actually. Okay. It's. I think it might be with Ray. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Yeah. And then next Sunday we'll be on our theme of birds again. Okay, lovely. And what bird is it next week? I think it might be eagle. Okay, the eagle. The eagle. Okay, great. So, brothers and sisters, it's lovely to have fellowship, isn't it? Yeah. So we praise God for his goodness. Yes. Okay, so you take care then. God bless okay, you. Okay, God bless. Have a great day. God bless.